I've come today to the Man de Massige, an area of reconstructed First World War trenches on the heights above the Champagne battlefields. It's an incredible reconstructed First World War landscape. A lot of original features, the, the chevaux de frise, the knife rests, the barbed wire entanglements in front of me are all original. But then the trenches themselves reconstructed using experimental archaeology to give us an insight into what First World War trench systems look like. And we're going in for an explore. I'm walking through these reconstructed trenches from the First World War. And this is experimental archaeology where they've used the original methodology, a lot of the original materials, to give us a bit of an insight into what a typical First World War trench system was like. And it's rained in the last few days and the trenches are wet and muddy, so that's very much adding to the atmosphere. And I'm coming into what is part of the main line here. The Manda Massage, where I am, was a, a trench system that was built up on top of the high ground above the village of Massige. The Germans captured this ground early in the war and the French spent a good chunk of much of the rest of it trying to push them off until the final offensives of 1918. And it really is one of the most incredible places to visit on the Western Front. There's an originality about this reconstruction and I kind of come into the trenches today looking at every turn for a French poilu, a French soldier. It really is incredible. And the detail is staggering. This is a, a listening post. At the end of that would have been a French soldier looking through the sniper's shield, through the loophole, out into no man's land. And the reconstructed trenches are built around two original mine craters that are here. Now, after the winter, these trenches can be in a bit of a tricky condition, as we can see. But again, it kind of gives us a bit of an insight into this. And the mud is slidey and sticky and is going all over my boots just as it would have gone over the boots of French soldiers defending this ground in the Great War. I'm standing here in a bit of reconstructed French trench with a firing position behind me, a typical early war period trench where there's a fire step supported by a bit of wobbly tin, some elephant iron as the British would call it, to get up onto the fire step itself. Wooden revitment supports to support the side of the trench, sandbags of course, and then some little loopholes, wooden loopholes for the Poilus to fire their Labelle rifles through. And you see this in a lot of early war photographs showing the trenches that were built by the French in 1914 and 15 with this kind of design. So again, this gives us a kind of really fascinating and useful insight into what trench construction was like in that early period of the Great War. And this landscape here at Mandamassi just goes on and on across the top of this hill and we're going to explore some more. And it brings us back into another one of these early war French firing positions with the fire step and the elephant iron support, the wooden supports on the side and then the positions for rifles to fire across into no man's land and a covered part of trench just ahead of us. It's an earthen floor which some trenches were like that this is the chalk landscape here at Massage. The duckboards are missing. It would need constant kind of work to keep this in a First World War state. If you selected top five Great War sites to visit along the old Western Front battlefields, Massage would have to really be part of it. I mean, just look at this. We're looking over the top of the trench and there's all this barbed wire. It's really incredible. And above us, the Skylarks, making this very much a kind of First World War scene. So we're in a little sap coming off the main line here. We can see the barbed wire 
all around us, adding to the realism of this reconstructed trench. And at the end of it, a steel loophole. This would have been a listening post on the battlefield to look out across to the Germans beyond. And the trenches continue right across this hilltop here in the Champagne, giving us an idea of what a World War I trench system looked like. And I'm continually amazed, really, every time I come here just to see the atmosphere, to take in the atmosphere of this place, to walk amongst the barbed wire, to come out as I am now in front of these trenches in no man's land, which would have been certain death during the Great War. It's a place of, not just a spectacle to come and get a sense of these trenches. I think it's much more than that. And I'm walking along a reconstructed bit of German trench now with barbed wire in front of it. We've crossed the blood red ribbon that was no man's land and come into the German side of the preserved battlefield, the reconstructed battlefield here at Massige. And I'm up against the lip of one of the mine craters. You can see the memorials just beyond and this incredible Great War experience here at Massige just keeps going on and on. There's even in a bunker here a German 77mm field gun tucked away. It is just, I mean I keep using that phrase, incredible. But Massige really I think has so much to teach us about what a landscape of the First World War looked like. So what's the point of coming to somewhere like Massige? It's not just a, a frivolous place to visit to see these incredible trenches. It is part of our education in understanding the Great War. There are a few places where you can come and explore trenches like this that are reconstructed in the same way, that give you a sense of the troglodyte world of the First World War, the closeness of the trenches, the narrowness, the confined space that these men lived in. And I think Massage gives us all of that and a lot more. That should be a place that all of us who walk these battlefields of the Great War, a place that we visit.